Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. Before I introduce my guest, I want to give a shout out to my sponsors at Blue Chew. If you are experiencing performance anxiety in the bedroom, you want to give Blue Chew a try. They give you that extra confidence that you need when the time is right for you and your sexy partner. And you can try them for free. Just pay $5 in shipping. Go to bluechew.com and use code Holly. Okay. So I've been trying to get my guest on the show today for like a year and a half. She's been sitting in the need to schedule interview column on my Trello program for a long time. I see her face every day and I'm like, that bitch better come back on my podcast. (laughs) And she is here. She's been in the industry for 14 years and was finally crowned the ex-biz girl, girl performer of the year back in January. Welcome Aiden Ashley. Hi, I'm so happy Hi. to finally be I here. Know, I know. It's true though, like honestly, like every time I, cause I had your beautiful photo too yeah. from Dean Capture. So like a lot of times when I schedule stuff, I don't get the girl's picture until like after the interview or whatnot. Mm-hmm. So it's just like a big photo of you that like looks at me every time I open <laughs> my like podcast organizational sheet. And it's like Aiden Ashley. I'm like, and of course my name's A. So it's like at the top, like yes. Aiden Ashley. Aiden Ashley. <laughs> and here you are. I am here. Yes. Finally. I know. How have you been? I've been really good. Really yeah. good. Busy, but good. This has been, so we're going to get into all of this, but I know that like from our kind of pregame discussion, this has been like, a different year for you. Yeah, definitely. I mean, winning the female performer of the year, I mean, girl, girl performer of the year was a huge milestone for my career uh, back in January, which was really awesome. But that's where I started was doing girl, girl. Mm -hmm. So it felt really good to win um, the award for something that I definitely started with. You were also doing red carpet interviews for Expos. I was doing that for AVN. Just kidding. Yeah. I was doing uh, the backstage hosting and I was the host of the AEE convention. I was a convention insider. Gotcha. Right. I wouldn't know because I never go to the EVN Awards because I never get nominated. (laughs) Sorry. It's like a running joke, but it's it's fine. You know, I lost Best Actress like seven years in a row from AVN. (laughs) Well, that's that's okay because I've lost the nomination game all these 25 years. That's fine. It's fine. (laughs) It's fine. No. (laughs) It's all right. AVN, I love you. It's okay. I'll still go. Um, So, okay. Well, before we – because I know there's like so much more that's going on this year and I do want to get to that, but – you know, I always like to start at the beginning. It runs origin story. So how did you get started in the adult industry? Um, I started in the adult industry filming in 2009. Honestly, I was fresh out of college. I was in Los Angeles for a music internship. And I didn't have enough money to get from my apartment to the music internship every day because it was five days a week unpaid. So I ended up going on the internet and being like, well, trying to find odd jobs. And then someone like made a joke saying, you should be a porn star. And I was like, yes, I should. And then they said, just kidding. You're not sexy enough to be a porn star. And I am a competitive person. Mm -hmm. So when someone said that, I was like, what are you talking about? I could be a porn star. Other girls- Don't tell me what to do. Don't tell me. I can can do that. (laughs) Watch. And so I'm not even kidding you. I got my laptop out right when that was said to me. I opened it up and I Googled and I said, real models have agents. So porn stars must have agents too. And I Googled top agencies in porn. Mm -hmm. And right then and there, I sent my photo to the top three agents in porn on Friday. By Saturday, I had a meeting and by Sunday, I was shooting for Penthouse. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. And that's actually awesome that your first gig was Penthouse. Yeah, it was really awesome. It was for Penthouse and also with the reigning Girl Girl Performer of the Year. Mm -hmm. And it was Girl Girl Work. Who was that at the time? At the time, Celeste Starr. Oh, and I love her. I know. She was the best. She's such a good first experience to have. She's sweet. She's a genuine person. She is has good hygiene. She, <laughs> um, she's, she's like a teacher and she really helps me out that first, that first day and on from there also. Yeah. So was your first scene then was a, was a girl, girl, wasn't a solo. Yeah, no, it was a girl, girl scene with Celeste it was my very, very first scene. So, okay. So that's like two days after you kind of had this thought and then like looked it up. Yeah. So what were your, how were you feeling like 
going to set that day, you must have been pretty nervous. Yeah, um, I was actually more nervous the day before going into the agent's um, building because it was he was currently still in like that, you know, the big vivid building in North oh, yes. Hollywood. Yes. And it's very impressive. Yes. And a little me gets there. I'm not even kidding you. Like my cell phone died as I got to the door. I couldn't find the number. I had to go into like the restaurant next door and ask them to use their phone and call the vivid building to bust me in. Like, it was real bad. And, like, I'm down there, like, trying to get in the vivid building, like, with a dead cell phone. <laughs> and I eventually got in and, um, you know, go to the very top floor. And they have, like, the biggest desk there ever. And all these photos of beautiful girls on the wall that have won awards their whole, like, career. And I'm sitting mm -hmm. there being like, what am I doing right now? I'm like, I can be a porn star. And I just re replayed the conversation from the day before being like, I could do this. No, it's fine. Like I could totally do this. Were you expecting like a porn agency to look like that? Or were you expecting like a kind of back alley shady looking like storage unit feel, you know, cause like people yeah. have different mis like conceptions of what the porn industry like looks like. I never really thought about it more. I mean, before, 24 hours before that moment. Mm -hmm. But I expected it to look like fancy and nice because of like, you know, the movies. Mm -hmm. Like porn agents in like the 90s were like, you know. I guess I, it depends on what movie you're watching. Yeah, I guess it yeah. does depend on what movie. But the movies I was watching, it seemed like a very like big money making industry, very glamorous. And so um, that's probably why I Googled top agents in porn and yeah, had the and I picked the top like three. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that was really um, kind of a shock to me to be there. And then when he signed me, and the next day I was shooting, I was like, "Oh, okay. Well, that happened fast." And then I shot on Sunday, and by Monday, I able I was able to have money so I could get back and forth to my internship. <laughs> <laughs> So tell me a little, I want to hear just a little bit about like your first scene, like what it was like when you showed up, what were you expecting, how you felt afterwards? Um, I didn't really have time to put a lot of thought into it. it kind Maybe of, that's a good thing. I am someone who's pretty, um, like, I'm very like, I could be compulsive and be like, okay, I'm doing this now, like, you know, put a parachute on a jump off of a cliff type of a person. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, I'm doing this, so let's do this. So when I got to set, it was the biggest mansion I have ever seen in my entire life up in Mount Olympus in Be like Beverly Hills area. Mm -hmm. I like am driving up this like roads up to like the most beautiful place and I'm like, oh my gosh. And then once I parked in front of the place, that's when I got nervous because like there's like huge columns, there's like huge gold statues outside and I'm just like, what am I doing? I have a feeling I know what house you're talking about. Yeah. Because you know how like, there's just like a limited number of, of like houses. houses in LA that yeah. will you shoot porn there. I'm like going through the Rolodex of locations in my head and I'm like, okay, I think I know whose place that is. Yeah, it was it was one that was used quite often then. Yeah. And, but I didn't know that. So I like walk, I like had no idea what to say. Like when you first walk in, you know, they told me to bring a backpack of like a backpack of stuff and a guitar. So I'm like walking into this porn set with my little backpack on and a guitar, like not knowing what I'm doing. There's people everywhere. Um, I think like, I was like, oh, um, where am I supposed to be? And they eventually get me to the makeup room and Celeste was already in makeup at the time. Mm -hmm. And she was like, I hear it's your very first scene ever. And I was like, yes, it is. And she's like, well, have you thought about this? And I'm like, no. I have not thought about this at all. I am just here and I am doing this. And this, and like you said, I'm in a mansion. I have an agent already. I'm like, this is better than like a back alley Craigslist gig. Right, you right. Know? Yeah. So I'm like, okay, this seems legit. Yeah. This all seems really legit. There's a makeup artist. There's like cameras being set up. I'm like, okay. Yeah. And she's like, well, you haven't thought about this. She's like, have you ever watched girl, girl porn? And I'm like, no, <laughs> I have never seen a girl girl porn before in my life. Wow. And then she's like, have you ever watched any porn? No, <laughs> Wait, I've, you've never watched I never porn? watched a porn before I shot my first scene. I never saw a single video. Wow. Ever. Wow. So she's now I see her starting to get nervous I know. in the makeup chair. And she's like and she like looked at everyone in the room. She's like. Can I just have everyone leave the room for a minute and have a moment with Aiden? 
<laughs> and wow. she cleared out the room, had the makeup artist clear out. And she goes, okay. She goes, do you want to do this? And um, I'm like, yeah, I do. She goes, okay, you're sure because your family will see it. Your friends will see it. This will follow you. Like you are on a major set right now. And I'm like, yeah, no, I, I can do it. Totally, totally fine. And she's like, okay, well, if that's your answer, we should probably go over how to do a porn scene before we start filming. So um, she then like showed me positions and how to open up to the camera and how to like put like your face on the side of a girl's leg so you can lick so the camera could still see, but yet you're not obstructing everything. Yep. And she showed me a couple of the basic positions and all of that was like pretty chill. And everything. And um, then she, yeah, and then she helped me pick up my wardrobe. She had jewelry in, like, this perfectly organized jewelry box that, like, I, you know, I had stuff thrown in a backpack. Mm -hmm. And, like, her stuff was, like, perfectly organized by, like, what set. So she, like, picked out jewelry for me that matched my outfit. And then we told the director we were, you know, I got in makeup. And then we told the director we were ready. Wow. That is, like... That is very heartwarming for me to hear mm -hmm. that the first thing she did was like check in with you and like kind mm -hmm. of your mental health situation and like yeah. that you were like okay doing this and made sure that you understood what you were doing because we've all heard the stories of girls who've gotten to porn not actually understanding what they were getting into. Yeah, I had honestly no idea what I was getting into at the time, but she tried to make sure that like I knew what I was getting into. <laughs> right. Which was very sweet and like I will always remember that moment and always be very thankful for Celeste yeah. for taking the time and actually talking to me a bit about that on my very first shoot, which has probably led to a lot of my longevity in this industry yeah. because I did have a pretty good experience on my first shoot, especially compared to some of the horror stories. I'm sure a lot of people have heard, like, I was pretty lucky, especially for how I got into the industry, literally cold calling the internet. Yeah. Yeah. Because we've heard, yeah, you're so right. I mean, your first experience often kind of paves the way for your experience in the adult industry. Mm -hmm. And it just like often depends on like what agent you hook up with or, you know yeah. what I mean? Like we have all heard those stories of agents sending girls to like horrific scenes or like some random dude in a motel room with like one camera where it's like clearly mm -hmm. not a professional set. And it's personal collector's item or whatever yeah. the fuck it is. And I've just, heard those too. Which is fine if you know what's happening yeah. and you go into it understanding that. But if you're going in expecting like a professional set with, you know, a crew and that's not what you're getting, that's, that's yeah. a little scary. And since I got into it not expecting or wanting a career out of it because I was doing a music internship at the time. Right. Um, I was like – um. I was like, yeah, like this is fine. Yeah. I, I'm I'm good. I can do this, like for some extra money here and there. Oh, that's what I was gonna say. Because I wasn't getting into a career when I did sign with my agent, he made sure to like let me know. He's like, So you're saying that you only want to do solo and girl girl because I wanted, you know, at the time I was attracted to girls, a little bit of a tomboy, you know, but like I didn't want to do like full porn yet because I wasn't looking for that career. Mm -hmm. I was looking for something to give me extra money so I could get to my internship. Right. You know, so he was like, if you sign and only do girl, girl, you're going to have this much pie. And if you do boy, girl, you're going to be very popular and you will get the whole pie of this industry. He's like, I can already tell by your look and how you're talking to me and how you're not even you're sitting here and you're not scared talking to me. And you're mm -hmm. an 18 year old girl just like telling me what you want and your limits and your boundaries and all of that, and I was, and I said back, no, I'm okay with this much pie. I think that's all I can eat right now anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and I won't ever forget that moment either because the look on his face, he was like, oh, she only wants one slice of pie. <laughs> and I was like, I'm good with the girl, girl pie. We're good. And so also because of that, I wasn't being, so I definitely had the talk saying I didn't want anything shady, anything like, on very legit, on the up and up, like I am good to shoot with. So I wasn't doing boy girl, so I wasn't being sent to like any strange sets. Mm -hmm. I was being sent to sets of penthouse with beautiful girls like Celeste. Yeah. Did you feel comfortable asserting your boundaries at 18 with such a big agent? 
Yes. Because of just how my upbringing, I was always in sports, dealing with coaches. I was already um, making my way in the music industry, um, working for radio stations, talking to, you know, doing running for rock stars, like doing um, being a runner for them, like getting their food for them and stuff. And so, like, I already had experience talking with older, more powerful people than me by the mm -hmm. time I was 18. So I think that definitely played into it because, like, I went into the office not really, like, I was a little nervous because it was, like, porn, but I wasn't, like, scared. And mm -hmm. also I didn't really know what I was getting into. Mm -hmm. So it was a lot easier for me because I did no research be like, no, I just want to do a couple shoots here and there so I can, mm -hmm. you know, make enough money for this internship. And I'm good with that. And I wasn't looking for a career. And that's why. So then how did it turn into a career? Well, you know, you see, once you get your first paycheck, <laughs> <laughs> um, and that really helps. And I'm like, wow, I just made more money in one afternoon than I have for an entire month of work. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I was also doing the internship. So I was like trying to do my other goals. So me having a job that wasn't like I didn't have to be there from nine to five or I didn't have a boss calling me in all the time. And I just had like a couple sporadic things here and there really helped like me. And then it just, I don't know, it kind of snowballed. I just started getting booked more and more. People started hearing that I was really good at my scenes. My right after the Celeste scene that I shot that same week, I did shoot a solo scene. And um, that solo scene was nominated for an AVN award, my first ever time masturbating in front of a camera. Wow. And when I was nominated, nominations came out, I was like, floored. I was like, I have a nomination. I just entered the industry like two months ago, three months ago. This is my second scene I've ever shot, my first time masturbating ever in front of a camera. I never even sent boyfriends nudes, never sent them videos, never done anything like that. Like, the first time I touched myself on a camera. Wow. And I looked at the list of people nominated with me. Joanna Angel, Bella Donna, Asa Akira, all were nominated next to me. And I knew those girls from like now a little bit more research I've done of the industry mm -hmm. being like, holy shit, I am nominated with literally industry legends. And I am just some newbie 18 year old that like was trying to make some extra cash. And I have no idea how this happened. And I remember like seeing my name next to, it was before, now I'm friends with Joanna and stuff, mm -hmm. but it's before we became friends. And yeah. I remember seeing my name in a category with Joanna Angel and Belladonna specifically, and literally being like, I think I might be good at this. <laughs> like, I, I think I know what I'm doing without yeah. knowing what I'm doing. Because at that time, I never, I still didn't watch a porn yet. Mm -hmm. So I shot that scene that was nominated without ever watching someone else masturbate on camera. I just did what I felt like doing. Did Were you always like a pretty <laughs> sexual person? Yeah, very sexual. Definitely. Like when I was in college, um, like I was like doing like some like burlesque dancing. I do like aerial stuff, but like so you already you know, had that, like I find that movements that helps. like body movements and whenever stuff like that. I shoot it like someone who's new and they have like some kind of dance background, mm -hmm. um, whether it be exotic dancing or like you know anything like or gymnastics anything like mm -hmm. that body awareness that you learn from that. I find translates really well in front of the camera. Yeah, I was pretty aware of my own body by then, um, but. Whatever. I mean, I didn't lose my virginity until after my high school graduation. So I guess I wasn't super sexual, but I did like. But like once you were. Like, I was like, it wasn't like sex. I was more like the teasing sexual type, mm -hmm. you know, like mm -hmm. I would like be like really like teasy with people. You're but a performer. Not like, yeah. Already. Exactly. Yeah. But I didn't like I didn't have sex with a bunch of people in high school. I had like one boyfriend. Mm hmm. So, OK, so did you did you continue to just do scenes kind of slowly or did you find that like you just started working a lot, a lot, a lot? And then what happened to the music internship? Did that go anywhere? Yeah, I mean, it definitely snowballed. Um, I started working a lot, a lot, a lot like companies just kept booking me for girl, girl and solo. Um, I guess I just had the look and the way that I acted and people were saying it was fresh and different, which would make sense considering I didn't watch porn and I was just doing what felt good and what Celeste taught me to do so the cameras could see what I was doing, right? right. Which <laughs> you is know, important. which is really important. So I was just combining that together. So, um, yeah, it's kind of like where I went with that. 
And then what made you decide to branch out into Boy Girl? Um, I was on set for a major movie. Um, one of like Axel Braun's big, uh, his big features that he does. And I was doing Girl Girl on it for Star Wars Triple X. And it was the highest uh, budget porn made at that time. And um, basically I was, I was sleeping on set. I was like, I like, cause we were working so many hours. There was like one time we we're shooting like 43 hours in a row. And I just like went and slept on set. And he's like, you know, I think you're really good at these features. You're like, you know, a trooper, a team player. Um, there's a green screen involved. And like, as a stormtrooper, like I am multiple stormtroopers in the movie because I had a mask on my face. So I could play multiple characters in the movie. And basically, we just started getting to talking during that movie. And he said, if I were to offer you a contract for a boy girl, would you perform solely in my in my big features? And at the time, I was more in the industry by that point. So I said, yeah. So I signed a contract with Axel Braun. And at the time, he was distributing through Vivid. And then it switched to Wicked in the middle of my contract. So my first ever boy girl scene was me being Catwoman for one of the biggest movies of the year. Wow. And then who was the scene with the guy? Um, who was it with? A uh, Giovanni Francesco or something. He's not around anymore. I like vaguely remember. Yeah, he name. was like um he pretty face not so good with dialogue. Mm. We're like on take 56 and he's oh still trying to say God. the same line Dude, over so and painful. over and over again. But we got through it. The The scene was nominated. The movie was nominated. I think it won best parody of the year that year. Mm -hmm. And so like for coming out strong, my first ever boy girl just won best parody of the year. My scenes are nominated for best boy girl. And it just and so my contract with Axel lasted about five years. And oh, wow. Yeah. And I would but I would only shoot. He didn't care about girl girl. I could shoot girl girl for everyone. Mm -hmm. But he cared about the boy girl. So I would shoot about two movies with him a year, mm -hmm. maybe three movies of like the bigger features where I was like a character. We did X-Men. I played Catwoman quite a few times for him. We did Peter Pan um, and a couple other ones during my contract time. Do you like shooting features? Like, what what is your feeling shooting features versus, like, shooting Gonzo? And for those of you who don't know features generally, have a storyline. It's a full movie, lots of dialogue. Gonzo is generally just the sex on its own. Do you have a preference? I love features. I'm a feature girl. I love acting, and I like... I like doing something besides just the sex. Mm -hmm. Like I really, cause it also, it helps the sex because then I'm in a character yeah. and that's what I feel like porn should be. We're entertainers, we're entertainment. It's not just like us, mm -hmm. you know? So when I'm embodying a character, then it makes my sex scenes even better because while I'm having the sex scenes, I'm playing that character. Which is good because a lot of people will drop the character once they get into the sex. Yeah. Like they'll play the character and then the sex scene starts and then they're yeah. to a blow. And it's and like, well, themselves. like the whole, this is supposed to be the most important part. Mm -hmm. You should stay in character, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Like I would say character, like do little cat moves while it's cat woman. <laughs> and like, <laughs> I love that. Th those kind of things. Oh my God, that's really you fun. Know? Um, and then, so you were with him for five years yes. and then that contract ended mm -hmm. and then did you just continue like shooting boy girl for other companies? From were you there. very selective? Like, were you still with an agent at the time? Um, when my contract ended, I was not with an agent because I had the contract booking me for whatever shoots I needed with right. him. And then my girl, girl stuff, pretty much I knew all the directors by then they just contacted me directly for yeah. work. So, but once my contract ended, you know, I was like in a different place in my life and I was like, wow, I'm seeing all my friends making all this like awesome money and stuff like that doing boy girl and all of their like, you know, I see like their levels going up and up and I was like, maybe I should just like do boy girl for everyone now because I mean, it's already out there. I'm already pretty deep in this industry. Yeah. So I talked with my current agents and I signed with a new agency and then I started performing boy girl for all companies. I mean, within reason, I'm mm -hmm. um, like, as you touched on before, I'm very much a feature girl. I enjoy the acting. I enjoy production of features. 
gonzo companies don't really book me that mm -hmm. much. And it's not a me, th it's a me thing and a them thing. I don't perform well just doing gonzo, really. Like if it's just straight, like I go to set, you have like crazy hot sex and then leave. Like it's not my vibe that feels very like porny to me, mm -hmm. even though that's kind of funny and ironic. Mm -hmm. But I like to make feel like it's a production and the sex is kind of there, but we're there making art. Yeah, I get that. That makes sense to me. Yeah. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick commercial break, and then we're going to come right back. So stick around. I'll see you in a minute. Hey there, listeners. Do you ever find yourself in a situation where the moment's right, but the sexual confidence just isn't there? We've all been there, and that's okay. It's part of being human. But what if you could change that? This is why I want to introduce you to Blue Chew. Blue Chew brings you the first chewable with the same FDA-approved active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis. It's prescribed online by licensed physicians, so you don't have to go to the doctor's office or wait in line at the pharmacy. Plus, it ships right to your door in a discreet package. With Blue Chew, you can be ready whenever the opportunity arises. No more mood-killing pauses or anxiety-induced hesitations. Just confidence delivered. And if this sounds too good to be true, we're also offering a special deal to our listeners. Visit bluechew.com and get your first shipment for free when you use our special promo code HOLLY. Just pay $5 shipping. Blue Chew is sexual confidence delivered straight to your door. Enjoy the moment and let Blue Chew take care of the rest. Remember that's bluechew.com, promo code HOLLY to try it out for free. All right, everybody, welcome back. Uh, so, Aiden, are there any other porn milestones that you want to hit, like anal, gangbangs, orgies, <laughs> Well, et you see, funny story. Huh. I thought I did. <clears throat> I thought that, you know, I was like, wow, I'm, you know, pretty deep in this industry. I, I should do the anal, the gangbangs, the DPs, all that kind of stuff. So I actually had a showcase scheduled this year that we were shooting. And it was it was a really awesome opportunity. It was really awesome all around. And my first anal was going to be in it. Mm -hmm. Well, um, a couple of days into shooting, some th I just realized that it's not for me. Like mm. doing anal, more extreme things. All of that, just it's not for me. I there's a couple of things that happened on set that made me a little skittish about things and kind of like a cat going into water. Mm -hmm. And then when the day came that I was supposed to be doing my first boy girl anal, it just wasn't wasn't good for me. It wasn't happening. So I ended up um, not just me, but collectively the director, the company owner, and me decided to kill the movie. Mm. And this movie, if I would have, it's what people dream about getting into the industry. Mm -hmm. Like if I would have done this movie, I would have been one of the four runners for female performer of the year this year. And knowing that killing the movie was going to mean that I would lose the opportunity to get that title, I still didn't care because it's not me and it's not true to being myself. I'm not an extreme girl. Yeah. Like I like girl, girl. I like loving, passionate sex. I don't like buttholes being opened and gaping. And I don't like being looked at like the tiny little girl that's being destroyed by someone. And that's just not my vibe. And even though I've been in the industry 14 years, like this was a really good opportunity and stuff. I was there and I had the biggest pit feeling in my stomach. People could tell that during makeup, I was like not having it. I was talking to the director being like, I don't think I can do this. And I, it came to that I didn't do it. And I have decided now through that experience that um, just anal, gangbangs, all that, just not for me. Like, I'm really good at being passionate and being flirty and teasy, but, like, and especially with girls, but I'm just not good at being, like, destroyed sexually. Yeah. Like, it's not for me. Yeah. Well, first I want to commend you for, like, following your gut instinct and not going through with something that mm -hmm. you're going to be uncomfortable with because that's a hard decision to make. 
It and was think- really hard, especially when all the crew's there, everyone's there putting yeah. pressure on me, the other talents are there. And like, this was a big deal. Like yeah. it would have definitely been nominated for movie of the year. It would have been nominated for showcase. It would have been nominated. I would have been female performer of the year nominee, like no doubt in my mind. How do you feel about your decision now? Like I feel really good about it. I feel like I listened to my gut. And honestly, let's be honest, like even if I did win like female performer of the year, what's going to happen? Like I'm going to have a trophy that sits on a shelf that like what (laughs) that like I don't even look at. Yeah. I mean, that also (laughs) leads me to the question. Like I wonder sometimes if a lot of girls feel pressured like it sounds like you did to do these like extreme acts in order to win that coveted title of female that's, performer. Of the that's year. where like, I was getting at. You can like never get that title unless like you do all this crazy shit. Exactly. And honestly, I'm very proud of my girl, girl performer of the year title. Mm-hmm. I worked hard for that. I love girls. I love on them. I'm passionate with them. Mm-hmm. I'm very proud of that title. If I got the title for like best anal or best gangbang, I wouldn't be as proud of that title because it's not me. Yeah. And it's not what I do. I don't do that in my personal life. It's just not my vibe. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm more of like a sensual lover than that. And so, yeah, I was I do feel like there was a lot of pressure on me for that being like, you know, you've you've achieved all these milestones. What's one more milestone? Like you can be at the very top. You can be at the tippy top if you do this, this and this. And I was like, okay, yeah. And then while I was there, I just had a pit feeling. And then just a couple things went wrong on set. And I was like, these things went wrong for a reason because the universe was telling me that this isn't right. And I'm already feeling like this is wrong. And it's just, yeah, it's not me to be, to do all those things. And I do feel like porn has been getting more and more extreme. And I would like to be someone who says like, you can still be a really popular porn star without being extreme. Mm-hmm. Yes, if if you enjoy that in your real life and you love like big anal and like all that, go for it. That is your cup of tea and that's what you should be doing. But people who don't do that naturally and don't do that normally shouldn't be not I wouldn't say forced, but they shouldn't be you shouldn't feel pressured. Pressured or like having everyone like in their ear talking to them that like, this is what you should do to be the number one star. This is what you should do to make your rate go up. This is what you should do to like be, you know, get that trophy on stage at the awards. You should just stick to yourself and that will translate so much better on screen. If I would have went through with this movie, the sex scenes would have been horrid. Yeah, I would have looked scared. I would have looked like I'm not having a good time. I would have looked like I'm in pain. Like, you don't want that. I don't want that. Yeah. I want something that someone can watch like at home as a couple. I love filming like couple friendly porn that like, you know, a man and his wife can watch at home when they want to get a little freaky. Mm-hmm. But like nothing that like someone in a deep, dark basement is watching on their own and like like putting like fantasies that are really extreme on people because I just feel like porn just keeps getting more and more extreme because people are trying to get the clicks and they're trying to get the numbers and they're trying to get their OnlyFans bigger and they're trying to whatever and they're just going so extreme that there's no room for anything else. And yeah. then once you go that extreme, you can't go back from it. Yeah, That is on the internet forever, yeah. like forever. Do you find that it's hard to like keep your head straight and like keep, your life balance being in porn as long as you have been? Yeah, like it's really hard because no matter what, there's a stigma about porn. Um, It's really hard to tell your job to just everyone. Like, yes, when I'm in my bubble in LA around my industry friends in LA with the people I hang out with and the girls in my agency, of course, like we talk about it all the time and it seems normal. But the second you step foot outside that bubble, there's a huge stigma. Like you can't tell Uber drivers, like, like, what do you do for work? Where are you going? You can't tell them what you do. It's dangerous. Yeah. You can't tell people next to you on a plane, like, oh, I'm like, I was on a plane the other day and it's like, he like, the guy next to me like makes greenhouses and he was telling me all about his work and then it came my turn. He's like, so what do you do? And I'm like, um, uh, mm, 
uh, or like family, like big family dinners. Like obviously my inner family knows, like my mom and my, you know, my dad and like my little brother, like they know. But like when we have extended family, like dinners and stuff for like the holidays and like my mom's inviting like her husband's brothers over and stuff like that, that don't necessarily know, they all look at me like I am a deadbeat or a loser because no one says what I do for work. So everyone just thinks like I float around in LA, like not doing anything for work and like living off of my mom or something. When in fact, like I've been supporting myself completely since I've been 17, but no, like my mom can't tell them that Mm -hmm. because be like, Oh no, she makes really good money in LA and does this and that. My mom's like, Oh, you know, she's like taking some classes still and, you know, she's doing some pottery. She's doing some pottery. (laughs) And then like everyone like looks at me like I'm a loser. Yeah. And it's really annoying in like real life. And honestly, like I get really tired of it because like I do work really hard and I do like work a lot. And it just sucks that like when I have those moments in like the real world of Mm -hmm. being like, this still isn't getting better and this stigma is never going to end. And also it's like a safety thing, like with Uber drivers, with people next to you, it's just like, because guys think that that because you do porn, that that automatically means that you want to have sex with everybody and like they have license to grab you and like to follow you home because you know, you're a whore and it means that you're this one thing all the time, you know, because you play this thing on camera, you're like that, all the time with everyone Mm -hmm. and that's gotta be frustrating it's very frustrating and very frustrating not to be able to be like i have a real career where i make good money because you can't say that so you're like oh and like everyone has like a fake job that they have like i'm an accountant or like i'm like you know you could say and this wouldn't be a lie but this also sounds social media manager i was just gonna or it's gonna say like an influencer but that also sounds like that that also sounds like a joke to people. That's no, that's I, that's the current thing that we're trying right yeah. now. It's saying that I'm an online influencer. But then people keep asking questions like, oh, what's your Instagram? Oh, what's your whatever? And I'm just like, oh God, you can't see my Instagram. And then also that's another thing. Like when people like you're out just like in like public, like your friends are introducing you to another friend like at a concert mm-hmm. or at the movies or something like that. They're like, oh, what's your Instagram? Like smile on their face and you're like, Oh, I don't believe in social media. Then you look like a freak also, but it's not that you don't believe in social media. She's I can't show anyone my freaking social media that's not in the small circle. Oh my God, I feel you so hard on that. I do have a private Instagram for like those purposes, but I never, you know, I've like lived in the porn world bubble like my whole life because my parents were in it and all that kind of stuff. So for the most part, it hasn't come up as an issue for me. But when I felt that the hardest was when I became a mom. Mm. You know, and I'm like going to my daughter's preschool and like parents are like, what do you do for a living? I'm like, I literally can't tell you that. I like, know, but at this least is you like, can say be like, I'm a fashion photographer. Or I'm a yeah. glamour photographer because yeah. you are. Yes. But then same thing. Oh, my God. Then then it's like, oh, my God, do you do headshots? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Different kinds no, of heads. No, I do not. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> right. Do you do weddings? No. The night of, maybe. The night afterwards. My mom would always say, I only shoot the consummation, darling. <laughs> oh, my God. That's hilarious. <laughs> but she has no shame, so. <laughs> that is hilarious. So um, I want to also talk about your sobriety, mm. which is, like, as a sober woman myself, one of my favorite topics. So... Tell us a little bit about, you know, what led up to that and how you've been feeling since, how you're dealing with, you know, life on life's terms, as they say. (laughs) It was a long time coming. I probably waited a little too long to get sober, but we're here now, so that's good. You know what? Nobody (laughs) ever, like, gets sober because, like, like, oh, if I just keep going, it'll get bad. It's always – you got to cross that line. Because that's the only thing that's going to get you there, right? Yeah, basically. Honestly, um, my day of stopping, like, using and drinking was the day after the x Awards, the day after I won that big award. <laughs> I woke up <laughs> to my house destroyed, a huge after party that I had there, girls' clothes everywhere, two naked girls sleeping on my couch, a naked guy in my bed. my award is on the floor next to a couple other girls that won that night's awards (laughs) our sequins are everywhere and I just looked around and I'm just like 
this was really fun, but I need to chill before I end up killing myself. And also, I want a better quality of life than waking up with my head feeling like I just hit it against five cinder blocks. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been wonderful having like a clear mind. It definitely takes a few months to get that clear mind going. Um, it's I always I honestly have a better time now that I'm not drinking. I ha- like I stay out later. I'm not waking up with headaches. It's really, really nice to have that clarity finally in life. And it was pretty it was pretty hard to do because most of my influences are like I'm like I would hang around like the party people in Hollywood. I lived in Hollywood. I definitely had the party crowd. Um, it was fun while it lasted, but I definitely got to the end of the fun and knew it was either going to go pretty dark. <laughs> And be really unfun and things were going to go a really bad direction or I could stop drinking, stop using and just be a healthier life situation for myself. Grow a garden. <laughs> um, have All more that time. like basic bitch shit that yeah. is actually really lovely. <laughs> it honestly is. Like after like living such a crazy life, like all I really want to do is like run away to the country and have a garden. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I hear you. <laughs> like that's like all that. Honestly, simplicity in life is the most amazing thing. Once you go through the fire and the flames and everything and you come out like pretty unscathed, you're like, you know what? All that craziness is like cool for the time being and stuff, but that's not what life is. Yeah. And having a real life with some simplic- simplicity and some real values and some stability is what makes you mentally happy. Yeah. So how did you do it? I mean, I know like for me, like I had to like go to rehab a couple mm-hmm. of times. Um, I had to like enter a 12 step program. Like I had to do all the things. Like I, mm-hmm. I literally like couldn't do it on my own. Did you just stop and like, kind of grit your teeth through the beginning and then started to feel better? Like, how did you actually do it? I gave it, um, I this is my second shot doing this. I gave it a good shot last year. And during that time I was in, I went into the 12 step program mm-hmm. and I was like starting to like learn those methods and everything. And that lasted for about three months. And then I started drinking again, mm-hmm. like last October. And then, so then after the ex day, I woke up. And I saw one of my like little roses, my white rose from my first AA um, meeting that that was there sitting on my nightstand. And the book, the big book was in my nightstand also. Oh, wow. And I don't know. I just started. I opened it while the naked girls were still sleeping on my couch. (laughs) This is like I wish this is like a portrait to me. Like in my head, I'm like building this scene and I'm like, this is like a great photo. And like and honestly, like at the time I was living in like a penthouse overlooking Hollywood. So like floor to ceiling windows, like like looking at the Hollywood sign, like it is a movie. Yeah. (laughs) Like and so I started reading it a little bit and um I started seeing someone and we actually discussed it and we both decided that we should probably start um, not drinking. So you're together. seeing someone romantically? Yes. Okay. I started seeing someone romantically. Um, that's really special to me. And so we decided we had a discussion in the morning, very hungover, extremely yeah. hungover. And I was like, you made out with that girl last night in front of me. He's like, I did what? He's like, I would never do that to you. And I'm like, well, it happened, but I was also wasted. So it doesn't really matter because we were just like dancing around like little hippies in my, in my living room and Mm -hmm. stuff, you know? And he's like, we should probably get some, like our stuff together. And I'm Mm -hmm. like, let's do that. And then I pulled out the big book and while the naked people were still sleeping, we were in my bed, just kind of like browsing through it and then went to a couple programs. Um, I am currently not doing the AA thing, even though I want to get back into it, it, but I am using some of the values and everything. The problem with that for me is, to be completely honest, is I have a really hard time sleeping. Mm. And for some reason, I'm like allergic or I have an intolerance to melatonin. Mm. So if I take melatonin, I have an instant migraine that like feels like my head is splitting open. Mm -hmm. And it's always been like that for me. 
So sometimes to get to sleep, I smoke some weed. Mm -hmm. And I used to be like an all day, every day smoker with like my vape pen all the time. Mm -hmm. But now I smoke probably like two times a week, maybe about two times a week just to go to sleep once I'm already showered, once I'm in bed and stuff. And AA people really don't like that, Mm. which I don't feel like that's bad because if I – if I was going to go to a doctor, they would prescribe me like a sleeping pill, which I feel like that is way worse than smoking like a tiny little hit of mm-hmm. a bowl and smoking and then going to sleep with. Yeah. So I'm not drinking. I'm not using like using other like drugs or anything, but I do occasionally hit my weed, like hit my weed mm-hmm. just to go to sleep, but only after I'm already showered in bed and I'm noticing like I have like an early call time the next morning or something. And I just can't get to sleep or a flight. So I will smoke. But also like people that are in AIA, they're all addicted to nicotine and they all are smoking cigarettes, like chain smoking outside. And then like I get in trouble for like hitting like a pin really quick, yeah. which is like, it's still the same. Yeah. And also, I can't take melatonin. I don't want to start sleeping pills. Like, that's yeah. a whole thing. So really, what are my options? And I wish there would be, like, an AA program that would accept me with still not daytime smoking, but smoking for the reason that it's meant for at nighttime to put me to sleep because I do have sleeping problems sometimes, yeah. especially when I wake up. So I'm trying to navigate that right now. <laughs> I mean, it's interesting that you say that. I mean, not to get, like, too deep into, like, the AA discussion because I'm sure, like, the listeners don't always – because I'll talk about this shit all fucking day. Um, But I totally hear you on that. And for me, like, that strictness works for me because I am, like, an addict through and through. Like, I would love to smoke weed, like, twice a night and go to bed, but, like, there's no fucking way Mm -hmm. because I get a little bit of that and then I'll, like – We'll find an excuse to do it again and again and again. Like, so for me, like that hard line, like I need that. But I recognize that not everybody needs that. Mm-hmm. I also have a friend who's trying to get sober from drinking, um, but he's still smoking weed and like he's doing meetings, but like he's just not talking about mm-hmm. the weed part. And it's like, it's like whatever works for you. We're like, we're not cookie cutter the same. I would love to find a sponsor that would like understand that and also understand that I have pulled back from being an everyday I mean I used to be on set with like my little like vape pen like smoking Mm -hmm. weed all the time and I don't do that anymore I don't daytime smoke anymore Mm -hmm. it's only at nighttime for sleeping purposes and you're right like it is better for you than I think like most prescribed sleeping pills that's what I I don't want to start a new addiction yeah like literally I've already thought about that I was like I don't want to start a new addiction so I don't want to get like Ambien or whatever sleeping pills there are like don't want to do that yeah, I was, you know, but when I went into my relapse, like I was taking Ambien and I was like convincing myself that that was okay. And but that led me down that path to, because I just like, mm-hmm. I'm just one of those fucking <clears throat> classic, classic, like alcoholics. Like I can't take anything. <laughs> it just fucks with me so bad. Like even the pain pills from the surgery, like that was a real concern for me. Like Ooh, I had yeah. to, my mom had to like lock them up and I had to like write down when I took them. Like, that would be hard. That was scary for that'd me. That would be really scary. Well, yeah. That would be really scary. That That's actually what kept me from getting the surgery for a long time mm-hmm. because I was scared of taking the pills. That's- but for those of you who didn't watch my last episode with Romy Rain, I got 360 lipo and a BBL. That's why I'm sitting so high because I'm sitting on this stupid fucking pillow, which I have to do for like the next three months. <laughs> it's very uncomfortable. But my ass can be so sweet. So, <laughs> just a, for context, be a sweet ass. It's gonna be a sweet ass. It's gonna be worth it. But right now, I'm so unhappy. <laughs> um, okay, so, so, you know, moving on from that, how has being sober changed your perspectives on your work or the industry as a whole, or has it? Um, it has changed a bit, honestly. Like, let's be real. Like, when you're It made me more clear, and it's probably if I was still using, I would have probably went through with the movie that I can't killed, Mm -hmm. that we killed, Mm -hmm. and just been like, oh, whatever, and just like if I was upset, go home and just like take another shot or like smoke excessive weed or do something like Mm -hmm. that, which I always did. Um, It's definitely given me a clearer mind. It's made me more particular on sets. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm more particular about hygiene. I'm more particular about testing. I want people tested sooner 
than the two week mark. Mm -hmm. I have usually a a four or five day rule of testing, Mm -hmm. you know, to work with me now. Um, It's giving me a clearer head and made, honestly, it makes doing the job like, it's not as easy just to, like to go to set and accept every job now. Mm-hmm. It's like I am actually like thoughtful in the things I want to shoot and who I'm shooting with and who I'm shooting for. And it's made me have a lot of internal discussions about things that I don't want on the internet anymore. Mm-hmm. Like I don't want certain scripts on the internet, like me doing certain like the like the step porn and stuff like that. That's just like why was I doing that? Like, and I remember before, like, I would get, like, a horrible script, go to set, just be like, whatever, do the script, and then go home and be like, wow, that was horrible. I can't believe that's going to be on the internet forever. And then just, like, smoke a bowl or, yeah. like, take a shot and then go out with my friends and then forget about what I did for the day. Right, right. Now I go home and I think about it and I overanalyze it and I go over it and over it and over it so I can't physically accept those jobs anymore. Yeah. And it's honestly made, like, working a little bit harder to be sober, but in a good way, yeah. in a way that I'm not going to put things on the internet that I don't want to be there when 10 years from now. Yeah. And there's a few of those cringy scenes that I have filmed that I wish I had it. So... I feel like we all have that, you yeah. know, especially if we've been in the industry as long as you have. Mm-hmm. So. Definitely. We all have a couple of cringy ones. Yeah. But hopefully there will be no more cringy ones. <laughs> well, now you have like a clear head to really like exactly. think about what you're doing. Like I ask a lot more questions now. I notice a lot more dirt on the floor now. <laughs> <laughs> like I do. I'm like, ill. <gasps> like I remember I was on set the other day. I was like, is that dog vomit in the corner of the room? <laughs> and like they're like, and I'm not even kidding. The PA got down on his hands and knees and smelled it. To see if it was dog vomit. Just clean it up, dude. Like, and then, like- and then I was like, "Do you want to taste it too?" <laughs> and like, they were literally like trying to smell, it, trying to figure out what it was. And I'm just like, "This is so disgusting. Just, clean it up. just, just let's, let's, so let's, gross. Let's, let's figure out what it is. Let's just, let's clean just it up. we don't need to know. Let's, let's just, just get rid of it. Clean it up. It's so gross." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there are some locations that I go to, and I'm like, you should pay me a cleaning fee because I've literally mm-hmm. gone in there and like cleaned their kitchen, cleaned the bathroom. Like, I actually like no joke. I added rubber gloves to my sets kit. I would because too. there are some locations that I have to go in and I have to fucking clean it. Like, yeah. I have to scrub the toilet because I'm not going to make somebody use that toilet the way that it looks. Yeah, there there are some rough locations because they just get used, like, you know, day after day after day yeah. after day. When are you going to get a cleaning crew in there? Yeah. I'm not even kidding. There was about six months ago, I was on a location for one company, did my scene. Um, Well, it was more than six months ago, probably. It was, like, last year. Anyway, it was last year. I did my scene. Um, The cum happened and it went on to on the cum. <laughs> like like that that's a, I don't I feel like don't, no one's ever said it like that the cum happened <laughs> the cum happened and it cum went, happens can we put that on our shirt it does that is a good shirt it went on to the pillow behind me okay and you know whatever I get up shower do my thing the next day I'm in the same location for a different company which made me laugh and I'm like oh how funny I was in this location yesterday could have just left my bag here I go I start doing my pretty girls in the room I put my hand on the pillow crunch and I'm like yo I'm like there is cum on this pillow and they go and the director goes there's no cum on that pillow that pillow is completely cleaned and I go there is cum on this pillow. They're like, there's not cum on this pillow, Aiden. I go, do you know how I know there's cum on this pillow? Because I'm the person that made it cum on the pillow yesterday and this pillow was there. And then they looked at it, they go, okay, Aiden, maybe there's cum on the pillow. <laughs> I put the cum there myself, people. I put the, That's why I know. This is how I know that there's cum on the pillow. But they were arguing with me being like, Aiden, there's that's not cum. This is a new pillow. And I'm like, do you know how I know this? <laughs> Because I made the cum come yesterday. <laughs> and this is definitely cum. And then I just loved, like, the turn. Okay, maybe you're right. Maybe it's a little cum on the pillow. <laughs> oh, my God. And so I'm funny. like, 
You know what's so funny too that you say that? That instantly makes me think of like the last interview I did with Casey Calvert, where we were both talking about how difficult it is to find like good locations to shoot at mm-hmm. because somebody jizzed on the pillow. That's like exactly <laughs> what she said. And that's like, and we were both laughing, like some asshole jizzed on the pillow and then the director just left it there. And that's why we can't have nice I wonder if it's the same pillow. <laughs> What if it's just, like, the one industry, like, random floating cum pillow that's just, like, in every set? This is why I bring all my own bedding and, like, all my own sheets and, like, my own pillows. I appreciate that. That you're, is appreciated. You're welcome. You're Not welcome. Not using the, the... The crusty cum pillow. The crusty bedding from the day before. Also things that, in my sobriety, I've noticed and I don't really want to be having sex on crusty beds anymore. No, no. I'll always bring your own bedding. I don't understand... Why people don't do this? Like, it's so. Awful. There's always makeup stains on it. Yeah, just, just, just there's always it's just something. Just, it's just unhygienic and disgusting. It's really gross. Bring your own bedding, people. Please stop jizzing on pillows and then leaving it there <laughs> for Aiden to find the next day. Did it make you feel better knowing that it was the cum? I mean, at least that's from what I said. I was like, I was like, at least I was like, the only thing keeping me from not freaking out right now is I know who this came from, who was here, and, you and made that it, happen. it was tested, <laughs> and like it's, I know that it's somewhat fresh from yesterday. However, still not okay. <laughs> However, still really not okay. (laughs) Didn't realize that this was the house pillow. Oh my God, that's so good. (laughs) And it was like in the master bedroom, like on like, you know, one of those decorative pillows that were like on the bed. It's not just like we put it there. It was like the bed was made with it on it. So like. Oh my God. So um, any exciting projects planned for this year? Um, I have, I mean. Pretty much all the exciting projects have been shot by now because people are now at this point of the year into editing mode to get it out before the award cutoffs. Mm -hmm. Um, I have shot some really cool projects. I shot in Stormy Daniels' movie. Oh, great. Yeah, that was so cool. It's called, I think the final title uh, is Redemption Mm -hmm. is what she named it. She changed it like once the whole Trump thing happened again Mm -hmm. and like she had to do like the deposition. She like changed the name of the movie to be like Redemption. Yeah, Yeah. I guess she was on her horse riding it and the horse's name was redemption mm-hmm. when she got the call saying he was being deposed i think it was mm-hmm. the term and so she na- renamed the movie to redemption which was kind of cute uh we actually got to go to florida to her horse ranch there for 10 days to film this movie oh wow so we filmed it on location on a horse ranch with um the locations were awesome the um, the stables were awesome there was like you you know more about it than I do, probably. It was, like, the champion stables were there. And, mm-hmm. like, we were filming at, like, some champion stables, which was really cool. I played Stormy's younger lesbian sister mm-hmm. that, you know, had, like, was a little, like, prissy for the farm. And it's, like, it was mm-hmm. a really fun, cute movie. Great script. Great time. And because we did film it on her ranch, which was, like, outside of normal porn locations Mm -hmm. and honestly like the there was no like food or like you know not like normal like easy to get food around or delivery or whatever like we all went to the grocery store and we had like stock in there and we would make like family meals together for those 10 days like a little camp exactly porn camp exactly we were like camping together we like woke up and we would like make breakfast together and then like go for a walk by the stables and then start shooting and it was it was a really cool experience and also I hear it's the last uh, sex scene that she's ever going to perform in. Oh, so wow. it's a pretty, pretty cool movie to be a part of. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. We love, we are team stormy over here. So yeah, I'm really excited for that. I mean, I mean, I think it's, I know the trailer is out. I've seen it, but I think like it's either coming out very, very, very soon for award season or mm-hmm. it might already be out. Awesome. Well, I can't wait to see it. Mm-hmm. Aiden, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. It's been such a pleasure. It's great. I finally came. I know. <laughs> I know. And But not on the pillow. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> not on the pillow. <laughs> Yeah, no, it and you know it was uh, it was well worth the wait. Um, if you're a Patreon member, we're gonna do a little Q and A um, exclusive for my Patreon members. They've sent me a couple of questions, but otherwise, can you tell everybody where they can find you online? You can find me at Instagram.com/slash/EvilAiden, um, AidenXO.com, 
or on Twitter at Aiden Ashley. Fantastic. And then you guys can find me um, on Instagram and on Twitter at Holly Randall or X. It's now called. I don't fucking know. Yeah. What is that? It took me 10 minutes the other day to find it on my like <laughs> screen because I was like looking for the bird. Yeah. And there's no bird on my yeah. phone anymore. I'm like, where's the what happened to my Twitter? Where's my Twitter? And I was like, oh, it's X now. Yeah, Elon Musk happened. That's what happened. Okay, cool. <laughs> cool. He wasted 10 minutes of my time. Yeah, thanks, Elon. <laughs> thanks, Elon. Um, or you can just go to hollylinks.com and you can find links to all of my social media platforms. I actually started a subreddit, mm -hmm. so I'm back on Reddit again. Um, and I, part of the reason that I got this uh, surgery is so I can go, like, harder on my OnlyFans. So I need to, like, start promoting that more. So if you want to see me naked... Some people do. I don't know. Um, you can go to OnlyFans.com slash Holly Randall. And then, of course, if you want to support this podcast and watch episodes like this live um, or uh, see the exclusive Q&A that we're going to do, go to Patreon.com slash Holly Randall and Filtered. Thank you guys so much for joining us. See you next week. <laughs>